everyone, welcome to Shaping Memories and welcome to the Daily Chronicle. So today is October 30th, the day before Halloween, and today is Candy Corn Day. Lots of debate out there if you like candy corn or not. I personally love candy corn. I can eat it all day long. Some people don't like it, so it's just one day. But we can thank the candy corn to George Renninger of the Wonderly Candy Company for creating the yellow, orange, and white candies that resemble corn kernels. So, yummy. If you like it, go get some. If you don't, like I said, it's just one day. Okay, our first article is, you are what you eat. These are always interesting little articles. So today has to do with Halloween. So the first Halloween candy was not candy at all, but soul cakes, small round cakes that resembled shortbread biscuits. Children would go from door to door on Halloween, All Saints Day and All, All, All Souls Day, offering prayer and songs for the souls of the dead. These Halloween season carolers were called solers, solers. And it was traditional for people to receive a soul cake for their efforts. In some countries, the tradition of giving and eating soul cakes lives on. While in many countries, the practice has been replaced by the handing out of candy to trick or treaters. So, you are what you eat. They used to give out soul cakes. Okay, our next article is called Only Human. We always hear that washing our hands with soap is the best way to prevent the, prevent the spread of germs and disease. But how does soap kill germs? Never really thought about it. I just knew I was supposed to wash my hands with soap and water. How does the soap kill the germs? This is pretty scientific. I read it twice. I hope I get it right. All right, soap molecules have a head which loves water and a tail which repels water and attaches to fats. Okay, so the molecule has a head and a tail. All bacteria and many viruses have a membrane that is made of fat. The soap tail punctures this membrane and kills the germ. Even germs that survive this puncturing are surrounded by soap molecules isolated from other germs, and then, thanks to the water-loving heads attached to water, molecule, water mo molecules and are rinsed from the hands down the drain. So the soap is actually like puncturing and attaching itself to all that bacteria and viruses and just washing it off your hands. That's pretty cool. Never really thought about it. But now we know how and why soap is useful with washing your hands. Okay, let, oh, I have a riddle. This is a riddle, we all know that, um, riddle me this, riddles are a play on words. So, here's the little riddle, and what's the answer? All right, what has a bottom at the top? What has a bottom at the top? Think about it, and I'll get back to you with the answer to our riddle. So let's find out what happened on this day, October 30th, many years back. So on this date, in 1772, the ship Resolution arrived in Cape Town, South, America, South Africa, helmed by Captain James Cook. During his lifetime, the British adventurer, explorer, and surveyor, uh, he went all over the world exploring. That's what he did. All right, in 1938, Orson Welles, at age 23, produced H.G. Wells' The War of the Worlds and achieved national and international fame. However, near panic resulted when radio listeners believed the simu simulated news bulletin, which described a Martian invasion of New Jersey to be real. I have heard about this that they read it on the news and there's many people who believed it was happening at the time when they were reading it. There, there's many people, they almost had to like, no, 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 it's not real, it was a story. 
So the daily trivia is about that. It says H.G. Wells and Orson Wells met when they were jointly interviewed on the second anniversary of the radio broadcast of the War of the Worlds. Wells believed that the press had exaggerated the level of panic following the broadcast. So the two of them met a year later and talked about it, about how um, people panicked when they heard that story. They thought it was real, really happening. Okay, here it is. Oh, let's find out about that riddle. Okay, the riddle. What has a bottom at the top? So when I read the answer, I was like, really? But it's true. What has a bottom at the top? And it would be your legs. Your legs have a bottom at the top. So it's a cute little riddle. You could share it with your friends or family. They'll laugh. All right, here at Shaping Memories, every day we have celebrate somebody's birthday. It could be anybody, actor, singer, mathematician, historian. You never know. Well, today, happy birthday, Patsy Montana. She was born in 1908 and lived to 1996. She was an iconic American country music singer, songwriter, and actress from Arkansas. She played the guitar and fiddle while she sang. The Country Music Hall of Famer was the first female country music artist to achieve a million-selling single. A feat Montana reached with her breakout hit, I Want to Be a Cowboy Sweetheart. She performed with many country music legends of the day, including Gene Autry and Red Foley. She has our quote of the day, and her quote is, I want to hear the cowboys howling while the sun sets in the west. I want to be a cowboy's sweetheart. That's the life that I love best. And that is from her 1935 hit single, I Want to Be a Cowboy's Sweetheart. So happy birthday to her. What else is going on this day, on our special days? Well, we have a few things. Let's see. Oh, seeing that it's the day before Halloween, today is jack o lantern Day. So. If you haven't done so yet, get out there, get your pumpkin, start carving it, get your jack-o'-lantern ready. Because uh, tomorrow is Halloween. Today, the World Series begins. So, if you're a baseball fan, the World Series is beginning today. Uh, today is also Time Clock Day. So, on this date in 1894, the time clock, the first U.S. patent for a time clock was issued to Daniel Cooper of Rochester, New York. So for I'm sure most of us out there know what a time clock is, but if some, I don't even know if they still use time clocks, but it's basically a clock. You put in your paper, it's stamped what time you got there, what time you took breaks, you clocked in and out to record your work day. Uh, the time was recorded on specially printed cards that were divided by horizontal lines into several equal spaces for the days of the week. The machine was known as the Rochester and it was used to record time for employees start and ended work. Oh, I don't know if they do that anymore. And let's see, checklist day. I found this interesting. I make a checklist every day. I am old school. I make my, I write out all the things I got to do today and I check them off. A lot of people use their phone. Nope, I still have that little piece of paper in my pocket for my checklist. So. Do you know how the checklist got started or the history behind this day? Well, on this date in 1935, a B-17 Flying Fortress prototype crashed due to pilot error. The checklist was created to prevent future pilot errors. So, the checklist started with a pilot's checklist. Like, check all these things off, make sure your plane's working right. Today is also John Adams Day. He's the founding father and second U.S. president, was born on this day in 1735. Also, as I told you before, it's Candy Corn Day. And the last thing, which I found kind of interesting, I don't know, just a little trivia fact out there, but today is the first frozen peas go on sale. So Clarence Birdseye sold the first frozen peas on this day in 1952. So, that was probably in 1952, probably something very exciting. You could go to the store and buy some frozen peas. Happened on this day. So, I hope you enjoyed the Joy Lee Chronicle. I hope you enjoyed uh, 
all of our activities and I hope you have a great Halloween tomorrow and please stay happy, healthy, above all, take care. And please, please, please stay safe. See you soon.